Pro. We are live, and we're just a couple of minutes early, and I'm going to try to find the, uh, the video here. Okay, there it is on my laptop. Get it loaded in here. This will give the wrench gang a little bit of time to come in before the official show start time. And guess what? We don't have a time check because on the close-up cam, I've got my Chris Reeves Sabenza hanging out. My Chris Reeves Sabenza hanging out. And then uh, right here on my wrist, I've got my titanium diver on wrist. And I can tell you right now, it's coming up on... Looks like about seven minutes tell here in about 20 seconds. So this thing is within a second still. It's just absolutely amazing, the, the timekeeping capability. And so we're going to talk about watches that you actually wear, watches that make sense to own and actually use. Imagine that. And we are live. Durr is in the house, absolutely. And Durr might have some interesting news to share with us here in a week or two. I won't let the cat out of the bag. I'll let him do that when he deems it necessary or timely. The best watch to actually wear is the one you like on your wrist. Well, there you go. Absolutely. And it should be comfortable, right? You should enjoy wearing it. It shouldn't be something that bothers you in any way, shape, or form, I think. I think it should be a joy to wear. That's one thing I like about this titanium piece is it's super comfortable on wrist for the size watch that it is. It's a good size watch, which makes it easy for me to read it in any lighting conditions. And of course, being a diver's watch, the, that's one of the benefits of a diver's watch is it's very legible in any kind of lighting circumstance. And so these are all things that we think about for a watch that we're actually going to wear and use and so on an unrelated topic, I was watching a, um, I, I subscribed to some channels for some overland people that take vehicles and they outfit them and they can travel off road and they can camp. And some of them have like rooftop tents and you know, cool stuff. And this one guy has a channel and he um, has a Jeep, a four door Jeep renegade that he's put one of those pop up. You know, the, the roof, the back part pops up and, and you can actually climb up in there and sleep like a rooftop tent, if you will. And it's pretty cool. And he's got a channel. He talked about all this stuff. And on one of his episodes, he talked about his shoes. And this is the second or third pair of them that he's had that they look like, um, like basketball shoes, the shoes you would wear. They're high top, like tennis type shoes type basketball type thing but they have a more aggressive sole on them so they're designed to like hike to be hiking boots or shoes or whatever you might call them and the second pair he's had and the and the the rubber on the bottom is peeling off right and he's he's and, and he shows the inside the inside's all cloth right and he shows where he puts it in and out of his foot and where his heel rubs against how it's wearing out and so forth and he's i'm kind of disappointed that these are wearing out and well, you know, I'm like, okay, you bought cheap junk shoes made in China, and what do you expect? So here's the deal. And we've talked about shoes before on my channel. I've got a lot of videos. So go ahead and order one of these. Contact Russell Moccasin Company in Berlin, Wisconsin, and they will make them to order to fit you. And guess what? It's going to hold up for years and years and years. And when you finally do wear out that sole... You can just have a new sole put on it and keep right on going. And it's not going to fall apart like that uh, cheap stuff. And here's the um, Russell Moccasin Company. Here's their website, russellmoccasin.com. And this is that particular shoe. They call it the Art Carver Traveling Sportsman Chucka. And, oh, I've got to cut to that. And so I'll show you the top again, Russell Moccasin Company. And there it is. It's uh, $508, so it's not cheap, but they custom make it to your foot, and it'll pretty much last your lifetime. Like I say, you might have that sole replaced a couple times, but that's a piece of cake. And um, 
There you go. You can get different different soles on it and different color colors. Okay, you get it in black, you know, whatever you want. So there you go. And and I've got a whole photo set on my Flickr of what I call quality shoes. None of these shoes are going to fall apart on you, okay? The vast majority of these were made in these United States of America, including these Limer hiking boots that you can have custom made. It takes a long time, long waiting list to get those. But you can have those made. Those will last a lifetime. And, of course, the Lucchese boots. They're all in here. And all these, these high-end moccasin-style boat shoes as well. They'll all hold up very, very well. So there you go. You just don't buy the $100 cheap junk made in China, and they won't fall apart on you. So, okay, so let's see who else we got in the, in the house here. Andrew's in the house. Ray's in the house. Uh, Dur says, fingers crossed. I should have a new stunner to the collection in due time. Okay, our fingers are crossed. Oh, they're already asking what the watch is. I'm currently waiting on one of my Grails. He, he, okay. We've got another incoming Grail watch. I'd be interested to know what that is, too. I just bought myself two pairs of Allen Edmonds. There you go. They came in the mail the other day. I got sized at the store. They are amazing. Okay, well, there you go. Um, they'll last if you take care of them. The deal isn't sealed yet. I'll share the news once it arrives. Yeah, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. You don't want to jinx that deal by talking about it too soon. Looking a little sporty. Been playing tennis. Our wag's in the house. Okay. Actually did go for a long walk today, but I didn't play tennis. There's not that many people here nearby that play tennis. I played a lot of tennis in Florida, but not as much up here. But, uh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. So, yeah, this is my, this shirt is, is from Congressional Country Club. That's what that little icon there is. That's the Congressional Country Club's symbol. And so it's very comfortable. It's about 75 degrees here in this room, and I got the lights on me and stuff, so I'm a little bit overheating. But uh, somebody else made a comment. It looks like your watch is all beat up. You know, they were talking about this watch, right? I did that update video where I showed some close-ups, and I showed the clasp. And Let's see here. Let's cut to uh, this camera here. See, I was... I was kind of showing this watch off, and he's like, well, you know, it's all beat up, and I'm like, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, I use it. I mean, you know, I wear it, but by the way, that's my timeless razor next to it there. Thank, shout out to those guys. I got a good shave in, but you guys tell me what you think. I think it looks pretty good on wrist. What do you guys think? Uh, I wouldn't call it beat up. But, you know, you look at it on a macro shot, you're going to see all the fine little scratches, the little patina that a watch gets with heavy use. And this has had heavy use for almost a year now. I don't baby my watches, folks. <laughs> you know, I don't baby the watches. Um, so there's that. Uh, it's not beat up, man. looks proper. There you go. I think it looks good on wrist. What do you guys think? I mean, do you think I'm delusional here? But I think it looks good on wrist. And that's what matters, right? Uh, what it looks like in a macro shot, how, who's going to be looking at it in a macro shot when you're just out there bumping around, doing business, doing deals? I think they're going to see it like this, about like this, right? They might see it about that close if you get kind of close to them, right? They might see it like that. Let me see if I can see the side view here. Whoops, kind of hard to twist my wrist around. I think it looks pretty good on wrist. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. GS looks like a stunner to me, says Durr in the house. Little Treasuries in the house. No, looks great, says R. Wags. Definitely watches are there to be worn, not babied. And so somebody was talking in one of the forums about an Omega that this guy got. And he was asking if he should sell it or keep it or whatever. And, and somebody was saying... Oh, no, that's a beauty. Get, get that one serviced and, and keep that one for your heirs, you know. H hand it down to the, through the generations and so on. And I'm like, my God, man, just if you like the watch, wear it and use it. Don't be thinking about three generations down the line. I mean, are they even going to be into watches? I mean, 
Come on, that's taking this this a little bit too far, don't we think? Uh, let's see, Mr. Bond, uh, not many like the new two-tone Tudor Chrono, but I'm buying it. Just love that one. Oh, man, please pass on the Tudors. Please, please don't be buying Tudors. We've got a lot of other options for you. Let me know the price range you're looking to spend, and let's get, let's get something better for you than a Tudor. Durr's in the house. Little Treasury is in the house. Steve, I got the email, and I'm working on the details to get down there for it next month. That's right. Durr's coming and visiting. He might even have a roast beef sub at... Uh, at uh, Hoffman's Market on his way to or from. We can make that happen, too. <laughs> I want cheerleaders' photos. Can you ship to Australia? You don't have to ship anything. Go to my, um, go to my Flickr, and now all my photos are published. They're all there. So take a look. Uh, let's see here. And... Uh, Durr, Durr hammered that guy. <laughs> he hammered the troll. <laughs> Jeez, this is a troll-free, um, troll-free zone here. I guess he got that guy got hammered. Whoa, there's the there's the name of that tune. Um, so it's almost coming up on. Well, it's after. It's four o three. We do not have very many live viewers. I don't know where everybody is. Everybody's out enjoying the day, I guess. Um, <laughs> this guy's trying to troll. This guy's, this guy's a total, total troll. Okay. So anyway, I don't know how these people make all these, these fake uh, YouTube handles, like left and right, so they can come in and try to troll a channel, but... That's what they do. All right, so we're going to have, um, we're actually going to have the folks from Little Treasury Jewelers. I think Steve is going to pop in and give us some information on that event that is coming up right around the corner. Uh, I believe next month. I don't have the actual date. Um, so you guys are going to get the actual date the same time that I'm going to get it. So he should call in here in a few minutes and we will see what's going on there. In the meantime, let me know what you guys think. What do you think is the ideal watch for you to wear every day, considering what you do and what your use case is? So share share with me. We're going to cut over to that Chris Reeves Sabenza a little close up. I do EDC that. I do carry that. So that's on my person. Everybody's watching the Masters Golf. Oh, the Masters Golf Tournament is on. Okay. Well, that explains it. Well, people can watch. Oh, I think I think uh, Steve's calling. Let me go ahead and answer that. I heard it ringing on my little headphone thingy here. Let me see. All right, I think we got an answer. Let me put my headset on so I'll be able to hear him. Masters Golf. Oh, the Masters Golf Tournament is on. Okay. Well, that explains it. Okay, so you're going to have to mute. We're getting feedback. Steve, so you're going to have to mute the uh, the show, show on whatever it's playing on. There we go. And we've got a... Look at that Demonico on the screen. That is gorgeous wow look at that puppy Woo! there you go folks you want something a little bit snazzy a little bit fancy we got it on the screen uh let's see uh peter's in the house uh S steve i can't hear you are you there I'm trying uh -oh. are you, can you hear me yeah now i hear you yep yep. yeah i'm trying to get my camera on to me take, take on your, one yeah take your time we're looking at the the, the monaco it looks good yeah thank you okay this should be yeah, i'm just seeing your thumbnail so i switched off to to me i'll switch back to steve when he gets his camera squared away there everyday carry watch to me has to be not too polished, decent 
water resistance 200 meter and a few practical complications like chronograph and or divers bezel there you go okay so get specific pick out pick the one that you would actually wear uh, Steve's in the house I got the masters on the TV and watching chip on the smartphone well there you go all right so um, okay all right, so there's Steve. All right, he's getting his camera all squared away. Bring it down, okay. bring it down a little bit more so it's touching your hair. Okay. We don't like to have that extra headroom over the head. All right, how's that? That's really good. Okay, Steve. Okay. All right, so do you have some news to share? Yeah, I have a little bit of news for everybody. Uh, we've been talking about our Grand Seiko uh, Basel uh, review event. Mm -hmm. We've set the date. It's going to be May 9th. It'll be 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we'll have two senior uh, Grand Seiko reps here in the store. Um, that will include Joe Kirk, who is um, an Uber expert on Grand Seiko. Someone can answer just about all of your questions about materials, movements, manufacture, uh, et cetera. He's uh, an amazing guy. And I think it'll be a real treat to... Uh, have on. So wait, you, now you event. said you said May 9? May 9, Thursday. 4 to 8. Can somebody put four that in the chat? Can somebody type that in the chat? May 9th, 4 to 8 p.m., just so people that watch later will be able to see that. All right, and, so give us the rundown. What's going to happen? Okay, we're uh, bringing in all of the Basel uh, novelties for 2019. So uh, they'll be uh, largely prototypes. So if uh, you show up and you're interested, you'll really be able to see what's uh, coming in the next couple of months. Okay. And uh, hopefully maybe make an order if uh, there's now, something you now like. Now, this is Grand Seiko. It is. Okay. Okay. So okay. just Grand Seiko. Uh, we're also going to have the Crador Master Collection, which is the uh, very li extremely limited production um, series uh, that are sort of above the pay grade of Grand Seiko mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, share some characteristics with a number of the models. And uh, we'll have them in. They have a Sonari. Uh, they have a Minute Repeater. The H2 I mentioned last time. Uh, beautiful, beautiful pieces, rarely seen here in the U.S. And uh, uh, well worth uh, coming in to uh, take a look. And uh, if you're in that uh, league, to place an order. Uh, some of them are just uh, several pieces a year are produced, so and they're rarely here, so it's well well worth coming in. And now, I now is this event invitation only? Uh, we're going to invite our Grand Seiko people and uh, my customer base, and certainly everybody uh, in the group uh, watching are invited. A couple of people have expressed interest in coming in. Okay. I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. We can help with accommodations and logistics. So, and, so uh, send an email to steve at littletreasury.com, steve at littletreasury.com, and he can fill you in on all the details and make sure that uh, you're good to go. So uh, we're pretty excited about it. It's going to be an uh, absolutely great event. And on Monday, um, this coming Monday, uh, which is the, what is the date, 16th, Craig? Oh, uh, okay. No, 15th, 14th, 15th. Okay. 15th. Uh, we'll be joining uh, the show at 5, and I'll be bringing in one of our uh, extremely knowledgeable and passionate Grand Seiko collectors to talk about his collection and uh, how he got interested in the brand and some of the activities that he's uh, involved with. Um, he's been to Japan. He's been uh, to many of their events around the country. And uh, I think it'll be pretty interesting for uh, so, you folks. So we're going to have a special guest. That's right. Cool. Okay, so, so you're going to rig up a thumbnail for that show and send me a description so I can get it all we scheduled? Will. And okay. uh, we've got to get him... Uh, wired in. Uh, okay. He won't be here with me. He'll be calling in from uh, his home in Virginia. And he's uh, a first time uh, YouTuber, Skyper, so uh, be kind. Yeah, so send him my Skype so that he can add me 
he has it. I'm okay. sort of grooming him on how to get in and uh, what's involved. And hopefully he's watching now also to you, see what... Uh, yeah, you might have him call you on a test, just Skype yeah, you. Yeah, we already have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, okay. Right now. Hey, yeah, we're folks, you talk about Steve is in motion. Steve is making things happen. And that's what this channel is all about, is people that are out there in motion making things happen. Give me, give me some thumbs up in the chat for the Stevester out there making things happen for Monday, Monday at 5 o'clock USA Eastern Time. Okay, so uh, if uh, you want to be kept apprised of our event on May 9th, you might want to go to our website, and there's a place to sign up uh, for the newsletter mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't done so already, and you'll be getting all the announcements and updates uh, about our May 9th event. Yeah, because people ask me, well, how do I find out about Steve's events and all that? I said, well, get on his newsletter, you know, get get hooked in. That's right. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It sounds like a fantastic party. Anybody, any other names you can drop of people that are going to be there? Well, uh I, I think uh, we're going to have some very interesting uh, collectors uh, okay. will be in attendance. Uh, they may or may not want me to drop their names. But, okay. Uh, definitely uh, uh, come in there. So uh, Some VIPs, uh, yep. Yep. So we have uh, Joe uh, uh, coming in and uh, our uh, East Coast uh, representative, uh, Gary, who many of you have met. Uh, yep. He's a good guy. And, good uh, guy. Two nice gentlemen, and of course, we'll have uh, some uh, wonderful Japanese whiskey on hand. Some and, some, uh, some libations, yep. Yeah, libations yeah. and okay. Japanese-themed food, sushi, uh, definitely. Well, there you go, folks. That's it. That Yeah, you know, when Steve puts on a party, you, you want to be there. You know, it's, it's not something that... Uh, that you want to miss, that's for sure. And we we may try to do a live stream for part of the event at some point, correct? Yeah, it might be uh, fun to do something with Joe, a Q&A. Um, yeah, we'll try to do something uh, live from there. So okay. we'll, we'll get Steve all set up so that we can do that. Anybody have any questions for Steve before we let him go? Are there any special watches that you want to show before you dodge out? I just had that one uh He's sitting here, which okay. is uh, a pretty interesting uh, Demonico uh, mm -hmm. sapphire crystal sapphire dial. I'll put that back on if I can okay. make this go correctly. And it's a flyback chronograph. And we'll switch back to you when you get it back on there. Yeah, hang on. So, Steve, coming in via Skype, you guys can do the same thing. So just let me know. Send an email to me, and we'll get you set up so that you can come in and show off your collection as well. He's trying to get that camera switched over. And it's not behaving very well. There's my Chris Reeves Sabenza on the, the close cam right now. And we, we got a viewer that says he's got, he's got a Sabenza also. We'll talk about that in a minute. So no luck with that camera? No, it should be coming up. Okay. Uh, for some reason, not. But it was just one, one watch. The one uh, that you showed earlier. Yep, they can go yep. back and, another and take day, a look. Another dollar. So I'll sign off. I've got some things to do. Sell a watch or two and uh, clean up for uh, closing tomorrow. So Well, well our, our WAG says... Um, Steve's party at Little Treasury is May 9th, 4 to 8 p.m. Craig and Steve will be giving out autographs for a small fee. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so, R. Wags, you got to come down. You got to come down for the event. Take some time off, for gosh sakes. He, he's, he's a workaholic, you know. Take yeah. a little time off. Come on down and, and uh, enjoy the party. That's what I say. Okay. With that, I'm going to sign off, folks. Take care. Well, we'll see you Monday. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Bye. There you go, folks. Talk about people that are in motion. That's what Steve's doing out there. He's making things happen. And uh, when we talk about uh, watches that you can wear all the time, we talked about this the other day. That's that Grand Seiko Stunner, that Grand Seiko GMT with the 9F movement. So it's only 12 mils thick. 
and accurate to within 10 seconds a year and extremely rugged, extremely robust. Hopefully he'll have one of those there at the event that I can take a close look at because I haven't taken a close look at one yet. Uh, Craig, please say hi to Steve from me if you will. I recently, I had recently a telephone call with him. Peter, Peter, you should have said that sooner. <laughs> He's off the show. But they'll see. He'll see. He'll see that you said hi. And uh, get on his newsletter as well. Send an email to steve at littletreasury.com and make sure that you guys all get on his um, on his newsletter. So David Williams says, happy Saturday, all. There you go. Everybody's watching the uh, golf. <laughs> of course, I'm wearing a golf shirt, so there you go. Uh, that's the name of that tune. Peter says, hi. Now, somebody made a comment earlier about their... Uh, Sabenza. Let's see here. Everyday carry. Oh, okay, that's the watch. Where was the Sabenza comment? Yeah, Peter says he has several Sabenzas. Wow. Okay. Trying to find that other comment. Somebody has a Sabenza with some custom handles, but I must have passed it by. Oh, here it is. Uh, African Blackwood handles Peter has. Okay. Cool. I'd like to see that one. Peter, you should Skype into the show and show us some of these, these goodies. Folks, keep in mind, you can always Skype into the show and join us and show show off whatever you want to show off in any event since everybody's watching golf we're going to wrap this show up but at least we got some uh some inside information from steve and we're going to have another discussion on monday at five o'clock so that should be very interesting let's see what else here that's all we got beautiful weather in las vegas today says david it's beautiful weather here too um been waiting for that blue dial 9f course since january mark says mark are you on the list to buy to get one what do you mean waiting did you order one uh give me more information give me give me the the details i'll hold on i'll hang in here for you to give me some details on that that sounds interesting i'll tell you what from what i've seen of that watch it is a stunner. I mean, it, and, and again, we've talked about the 9F movement before. Some people are like, oh, I never want a quartz watch or whatever. But the 9F is a, is a really special animal, if you will. It's a specially, extremely well-built quartz movement that's very robust that will run for 50 years without any service. You do have to replace the battery about every three years, but no servicing on that puppy. And it's extremely durable, robust, extremely accurate. And that's just a gorgeous watch. I mean, it's got all the, the fit and finish and quality and detailing of any Grand Seiko. But it's got the loom and it's got the GMT function. And it's a very manageable size. It's about 39 mils and only 12 mils thick. So that could be an all-arounder. That could be worn under a dress cuff as well. So there's that. Uh, anyway, I'm waiting for that answer from Mark on the 9F. And then we will wrap this puppy up. Let me know if there are any last-moment questions. And again, I want to thank the folks at Timeless Razor. There's, my, there's a closer-up of my... Grand Seiko. There's the Timeless Razor right next to it that uh, I really do enjoy using. So there you go. Let's see here. Dur says the accuracy of the 9F is remarkable and, and the durability. Um, is this the David S. Williams? Okay, there's a question. Um... I, I will Skype in in the future. At the moment, it's a mess with my PC. I might send a picture by email, Peter says. Okay. 
If you can email it right now, I'll show it. But you got to do it now because I'm getting ready to wrap this puppy up. See what else we got on the screen here. So what, it, what else we can share. There's that side view of that watch. You can see there how, how nice it is. The blue one there. That's the one. Then, of course, we talked about, and we're talking about watches you can wear all the time. You got to talk about the Yacht Master. It's less than 12 mils thick. It's a 40 mil watch. So, and again, it would be very legible, very comfortable on wrist. You really got to talk about the Yacht Master when you're talking about a, a wear all the time, heavy use watch. Only thing is, I've gotten so spoiled by the accuracy of the GS, both the Spring Drive and the 9F that I had, that I don't know if I can go back. I don't know if I can leave that accuracy, if you will, uh, to go back to the Rolex. Let me see here if... Yeah, I don't see an email. Don't see an email yet. And then I got another guy that made the comment on the video I did about not servicing the, the Rolex and just waiting until something's wrong with it and then have it fixed. Oh, you, you can't do that. You know, you, you got to take care of that watch so that, you know, when you hand it down to whoever inherits the watch, you know, they're going to get a watch in really good shape and all that. I, I said, listen, my heirs would much rather get money. <laughs> they're going to get more money if I don't waste it on having a watch service that doesn't have any problems. So that's the name of that tune. You know, we're not going to do unnecessary uh, servicing on a watch. And that's the name of that tune. And here's another comment on that video. Yeah, this one agrees with me. You're 100%, 1,000% right. Only if the watch fails do you have it serviced. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up because I don't see that picture coming in, but maybe we'll do it another time. And um, maybe Peter will actually Skype in on a later show. Just let, let me know. If you want to Skype in, send an email to me. You know what my email is. My name, craigship at gmail.com. Send an email, and I'll make sure that we make arrangements for you to be able to Skype into the show. How about you have a show from Little Treasury where you try on the new GSGMT and give us an on-rest shot? Well, hopefully we're going to do a live stream from that event. That's the plan. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, where did Mr. Blonde go? He was going to buy a two-tone Tudor Chrono. And we're going to give him another recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Please. Please don't do that. Oh, boy. Somebody buying a tutor. <clears throat> there are much better options. Much better options than that. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to wrap this puppy up so everybody can go back to their golf and watch their golf. And... Uh, we will be live Monday. It looks like Monday at 5 o'clock. So everybody, hopefully you can tune in then and we'll see what's going on. Well, I can take these earbuds off. I didn't need them. Uh, let's see. Thanks, DW. I was just curious. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can stop this. Let's go switch back to a little Sabenza there. There's the little Chris Reeves Sabenza. Made in Idaho, I guess. Let's see. Uh, Peter says, I will send you an email. New Pepsi or GSGMT? Yeah, Pepsi would be a good option for a beater all around watch. Uh, thanks, Craig. Have a great weekend. And I'm on the list. I'm on the waiting list for Pepsi, but I haven't gotten that call yet. So we'll see what happens on that, too. All right, we're going to wrap this puppy up, and we will um, 
catch you all on the next one. That's what we'll do. Catch you all on the next show. Hey, click subscribe and click the little bell.